What's going on everybody? I'm Johnny Brook. Welcome back to another Crafter Workshop video. Today's video, I'm gonna show you how to build this simple, modern outdoor patio cooler. These are great for serving food and drinks at your next party. Really easy to build with basic tools using materials that are totally readily available. So let's go ahead and get started with the build and I'll show you how I made it. I decided to use black pipe for the base on this patio cooler build, so I started with building the base. Black pipe is kind of notoriously hard to get exact measurements on, so I wanted to make sure the base was going to fit the top section of the patio cooler before building it. I took all the pieces out of their individual bags and threaded them together to form the base. Each leg section forms kind of an H shape, and then the two halves are connected by one long stretcher. After getting everything assembled, I measured and realized I was way off with the base about four inches too long and three inches too tall. So after making a trip back to the store, I got the final pieces I needed and then could move on to final assembly. Before assembly, I needed to clean all of the gunk off of the pieces. And luckily, since these parts were individually packaged, they didn't have the annoying labels these pieces usually have, but they were still covered in a coating of grease. To remove this, I used acetone, which cut right through the coating with no problems. After getting everything cleaned up, I could start with assembly. I used thread locker to lock all the joints together and added a few drops onto the threads at each connection point. Once one section was together, I made sure to check its measurements against one of the other sections to make sure they lined up. Next, I repeated the process for the short stretcher sections that connect the legs and long stretchers. And if you've got a vise on your workbench, it can definitely be really helpful in getting these joints tight. I could then assemble each leg section, attaching a leg to each end of the short stretcher, and I also needed to make sure those center T connections were perpendicular to the legs here so that the long stretcher would line up properly. Finally, I could add the long stretcher to complete the base, and I made sure everything was nice and tight and checked all the measurements before moving on to paint. Now, if I left the black pipe as it was, it would have rusted from being exposed to the elements, so to protect it and give it a cleaner look, I sprayed on a few coats of flat black enamel spray paint, which is rated for outdoor use. Now, I wanted this patio cooler to be mobile so that it could be moved to wherever beverages are needed on my patio, so I decided to add some casters. I found these little adapters on Amazon, I'll have a link to them in the video description below, but they allow you to connect casters to black pipe, which is usually kind of difficult. I threaded the casters onto the adapters, made sure they were completely seated, and then used some 5-minute epoxy to glue them into the bottom of the base. While the epoxy dried, I could get to work on the top section of the patio cooler. And this project is sponsored by True Value Hardware, and all the tools I used in this build were purchased at the Howard Brothers True Value store in Duluth, Georgia, along with the Orca cooler I used on this build. Now, True Value stores are locally owned and operated, and these stores take pride in helping their neighbors complete their projects. There are over 4,000 True Value stores in 58 countries, so make sure to visit truevalue.com or click the link in the video description below to find a True Value hardware near you. I started by breaking down one of the pressure treated 2x4s into the pieces that would form the frame of the top section using my circular saw and speed square. I'll have a full cut list and free plans available for this on my website. I'll have links to those plans in the video description below in case you're interested in building one of these for yourself. Next, I clamped the pieces together, checked for square, and then pre-drilled and added 2-inch stainless steel screws in each corner. It's also really important to make sure things are square at this point as everything will be built on top of this framework. I made two of these frame sections and then cut the short uprights to size. To connect these to the frames, I drilled angled holes through each end of each piece so that I could toenail the screws through the upright and into the frames. I then clamped the upright into place and drove in two screws at each corner. I repeated this process at each corner of one of the frames, pre-drilling angled holes and then driving in two screws per joint, and then added the other frame section and attached it to the other end of the uprights. And this forms the framework for the top section. Next, I needed to build the structure that would support the cooler. I built this out of pressure treated 2x2s and cut the pieces to length based on the plans using my circular saw and a speed square. To assemble the frame, I clamped them together, pre-drilled and added one screw per joint, making sure to check for square along the way. Next, I added the center support piece in the same way. The cooler support is attached to the 2x4 frame with an upright at each corner, which I attached with one screw on each upright. After adding the uprights, I did a quick test fit with the Orca 20 quart cooler to make sure it fit, and it did. Next, I flipped the cooler support upside down and dropped it into one end of the 2x4 frame. I then drove two screws through each upright into the 2x4 frame. I needed something for the boards which will cover this frame to attach to on the center of the front of the patio cooler, so I added another 2x2 upright to the center, again using the angled screw method. 
I also needed one more board in the center of the top of the piece to provide some more support once the hole for the cooler was cut out, so I cut a piece of 2x4 to length and added it with a few screws. The back of the patio cooler was going to have an open area, so I figured it'd make for a perfect shelf for storing little odds and ends, so I cut some more 2x2 pieces to fit the opening and attached them with a screw from each end. I used a couple of pieces of scraps to space the pieces about a quarter of an inch from each other. The last pieces to add to the frame were a few 2x4 pieces that would give some more area for the flanges on the metal base to attach to, and I added those to the inside of each corner using a few 2.5 inch screws. I probably should have done this before adding the outer boards, hence why you see some of those already added. Now speaking of those outer boards, next it was time to start installing those. I used Trex for this build, which is a composite decking material that comes in a bunch of different colors and sizes. I picked up six boards at eight feet long each and made sure to get boards with no groove on the edges since I wouldn't be using the grooves and they'd look a little weird in the final piece. Now, Trex is not cheap. These boards were about 13 bucks each, so you could certainly save some money by using something like pressure treated one by sixes or cedar fence pickets instead, but I just wanted to try working with Trex and see what it was like. The first boards to add were the three top boards, which are flush with the edges and ends of the frame, and the boards are spaced about an eighth of an inch apart, and I again used some scraps to get an even spacing here. I pre-drilled and added three screws on each end of each board, which was kind of overkill. If I were to do it again, I would have probably only used two screws, but once that first board had three screws, the rest needed to match, so I was kind of committed to that. I also made sure to measure out the location of each screw so that they all lined up and looked good in the final piece. The next board to add was on the back top edge of the patio cooler, and it needed to be ripped to width to line up with the opening for the shelf. I ripped the board using my circular saw and a 5 foot level as a straight edge. I installed the piece on the back of the patio cooler using a few screws, some of which needed to be angled since they were actually running into some of the other screws in the frame section. Next I added another piece to the bottom edge of the back, which again needed to be ripped to width, which I did off camera. I cut a couple pieces from the off cut from that bottom piece to fit the gap between the back pieces and added them using a few screws. And you'll notice that the cut edges of all these pieces are all oriented towards the outside edges of the piece and that's so they'll be covered up later on. While the sides of the patio cooler were still open, I went ahead and cut out the opening for the cooler. It was going to be a lot easier to do this while I could still see where the cooler support pieces and the frame were on the inside of the piece. I laid out the lines for the cutout using my speed square and level, making sure the opening lined up with the opening in the frame, and then I clamped my level in place, taking into account the offset from the circular saw plate and the blade. To make this cut, I needed to do a plunge cut with the circular saw, which can be a little dangerous if done incorrectly, so just make sure you're comfortable with this cut before trying it. Basically, I pulled back the blade guard, lined up the plate of the saw with the straight edge, and lowered the blade into the top. It's extremely important to watch your blade here because you don't want to cut past your layout lines. And I cut about half an inch past my layout line on this first cut, which wasn't a huge deal but ended up causing a few issues later on, so just make sure to cut to your lines and you'll be good to go. Next, I moved everything over to the other end of the opening, this time using one of the off cuts as my straight edge since the level was a little too wide to use here, and I made my second cut. With both ends cut, I could cut the sides, and this is where that errant cut from earlier became a little bit annoying. So instead of this cut being into open space, it was over the very edge of the frame below, and this wasn't an issue when making the cut with the circular saw, but when I went to cut the corners with my flush trim saw, I couldn't get into the area because the frame was blocking it. Anytime you're making cuts like this with the circular saw, you have to finish them with some other kind of saw since the round blade of the circular saw doesn't complete the cut. I pulled out my jigsaw since the flush trim saw wasn't working and kind of forced it into the kerf and got it done, but it was a bit of a pain with the jigsaw bouncing all over the place at first, and the moral of the story is just to pay attention and cut on your lines and you won't have an issue. Case in point, the other side cut perfectly and the jigsaw had no trouble completing the corner cuts and a flush trim saw also would have worked there. After finishing the cutout, I test fit the cooler and it fit great. It was a little bit oversized, but that's fine. With the cutout done, I could add the rest of the exterior boards, starting with the sides. Once the sides were attached, I could attach the last of the exterior boards, the front pieces. These run the full length of the patio cooler, covering that ingrain on the side pieces and providing a super clean look to the front of the piece. After attaching the boards at each end, I also marked a line down the center and added a row of screws there as well. With that, all the exterior boards were added so I could go ahead and get the base attached to the top. 
I flipped the top over, set the base in place, centered it, and added inch and a quarter pan head screws to attach it. The final touch on the patio cooler was to add a bottle opener to the side of the piece. I decided to make things a little fancier and add a few rare earth magnets to the inside of one of the boards so that the bottle caps catch magnetically instead of falling on the ground. To do this, I removed one of the side boards and drilled a few holes on the inside face of the board using a Forstner bit that matched the size of my magnets. I then used some CA glue to install the magnets into the holes, and I made sure to orient the magnets correctly so that they would catch the caps. After reinstalling the board, I tested it out with a well-deserved beer, and it worked perfectly. And with that, the patio cooler was done. All right, hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. I'm really happy with the way this one came out. I used totally basic power tools and I think came up with something that looks awesome and is super functional. I had kind of a little party get together just to kind of break this thing in and it kind of became the center of conversation. Everybody just kind of hung out around it. You can grab another beer, grab a slice of pizza, and it's just really convenient to have that little bit of extra countertop space as well as having the cooler up off the ground with a bottle opener and having it all mobile so you can move it to kind of wherever you're hanging out. The beauty of using this Trex material is it'll last for years and years. I mean, this stuff I think has a 25 year warranty, so it should last for a long, long time. But overall, I think it turned out great. Again, I will have free plans available in case you guys want to build one of these for yourself. I'd also like to thank the folks at True Value again for sponsoring this video. They challenged me to build a patio cooler and I'm really happy they did because I think this came out pretty awesome. Also, I've added the new YouTube sponsor feature to the channel. In case you guys are interested, there'll be a link in the video description. Also, there's just a sponsor button probably under this video as long as you're viewing it on desktop. But basically, you get all kinds of cool perks. You get a little custom crafted icon next to your name. You get exclusive videos, exclusive live streams. So check that out in the video description below in case you're interested. All right, thanks again for watching, everybody. And until next time, happy building.